I've been following some of the internet traffic on YouTube and 5.1 audio, whether indeed YouTube does deliver 5.1 digital to the end user or not. There seems to be arguments going both ways. Uh, but as I have a little bit of a background in cinema sound and working with people like Dolby, I thought I'd have a dig around and find out what's going on. Now, if you're a normal mortal watching YouTube on your cell phone or on your laptop, the simple answer is YouTube does not deliver 5.1 digital. I think we're looking at some specific TVs and possibly the PS4 where things may be different and the jury's out on what's happening there, but it does look as though there's some interesting developments in those very specialised delivery networks, but for the general user, doesn't happen. So before those people who are convinced that they do hear 5.1 on their computer systems start getting a bit annoyed, I'd like to go through a little bit of a history of cinema sound because that'll tell us exactly what's going on. For most cinema, stereo started in the 1970s with the introduction of Dolby Stereo. Now, Dolby Stereo used principles first created for quadraphonic sound on LP, which put two channels at the front, stereo at the front, and stereo at the back, and used a matrixing system, which is an electronic combining process to put the rear channels onto the front channels together but with a phase relationship so that you could put them on a two channel carrier that is stereo LP. When you played the LP the matrixing system decoded those signals and put the audio back on the back two channels but because you've mixed stuff up you can't really perfectly unmix it so the system was less than perfect, but did work. Now what Dolby did was to put a twist on this idea. Instead of having stereo front and stereo back, they put three of the four channels at the front, a left, center, right, and put one as a mono surround. But they still used the matrixing system to put it on a two channel carrier, which was the optical track down the side of the film. So what do those front three channels actually carry? Well, left, centre, right carry a spread of the music and the sound effects and the atmosphere. All the dialogue was really placed, and still is, on the centre channel. Now you can put dialogue moving around as people move across the screen, but it sort of really feels a bit odd when you actually see it. So most of the time when you watch a movie, the dialogue is placed dead centre. So now we move on to the 90s with the introduction of digital cinema sound. Now that's most notably Dolby Digital, but there was also SDDS and DTS and a couple of obscure ones such as CDS that fell by the wayside. Now they all worked more or less the same. They all encoded channels into a optically recorded bitstream down the side of the film. And they all carried 5.1 audio as a minimum. Now 5.1 means left, centre, right, that's the first three, but stereo surrounds. The point one is a sub bass. Now that carries audio that's only up to about 100 hertz and used for all the big bang effects and the big explosions, all the things that really make an exciting big movie even bigger. The advantage of having a separate track is that you can then feed that to dedicated sub bass speakers behind the screen with your own amplifiers. You don't have to build everything huge. You've got things that were just built to generate those low frequency bangs. What's often left unsaid about the introduction of digital cinema sound is something that is very obvious but worth saying, which is it also introduced five discrete channels. The five channels were completely separate. They weren't mixed together as they were with Dolby Stereo. So anything you place will always be in exactly the same position. This is great. There's one slight downside with that, which is to deliver this, you do need a five channel carrier. Whereas with Dolby Stereo, you can get away with delivering it just on two channels and still get some impact. 
So what does YouTube do with your audio? Well, you've got your video with its nice 5.1 digital and you upload it. It seems that YouTube hangs on to a master copy of that, which it may be using to deliver to these specialized delivery systems like the PS4. But for the normal user, it produces re-rendered versions at varying quality levels. So for your computer, which is its fiber connection, it'll deliver a high bit rate, high quality version. And for your cell phone, it'll produce a low bit rate, much lower quality version, but all appropriate to the device you're looking at. It also reprocesses the audio and it reprocesses it down to two channels. Now, in the good old days, I 2012 and before, YouTube did something very, very crude. It simply stripped out all of the real information in the subbase. So anything on the back just disappeared off the face of the earth. Now, after 2012, they went a bit more sophisticated and used downmixing. Downmixing is something that's done all the time. When you're watching a movie that starts in life at 5.1 on your desktop or laptop or phone, the downmixing process is applied to take those 5.1 channels and deliver them in stereo. Now, what's happening there is the center channel is being spread across left and right, and the rear channels are then transcoded onto the front, but with a phase difference. So you can hear everything that's going on, apart from the point one, that's always thrown away. But if you think about it, what you're getting with down mixing is effectively Dolby Stereo. You're getting a signal that has got front left and right with the center spread on it, and the rears added to it, but in a phase relationship, so you could extract them. And this is exactly what's happening with YouTube. The audio being delivered is two channel, but it does contain some information about what's happening at the rear. So if you're one of those who are watching videos with 5.1 on your YouTube and being convinced that you're hearing surround, you're not mad, you're not delusional. What's happening is that the YouTube player is kicking into matrix mode and using that Dolby stereo type system to extract some surround onto the rear speakers. And you're going to get an effect that relates to what was there originally, and that's going to be blooming good. Won't be perfect, or certainly won't be digital 5.1, but it's giving you some of what was there on the original. Now, if you disagree with what I've said, feel free to pass comments. Um, if you like what I said, or even if you didn't like what I said, feel free to subscribe. Uh, there's going to be a lot more of this sort of information about cinema sound and audio in general, certainly a lot of antique audio coming out, and we'll uh, be able to cover some more things for you in the not-too-distant future.